How many people here love math? Liked math in high school? Come on. Oh, there's a few of you. Okay. Now, when people usually mention the word math, data, statistics, it's kind of dry, right? I mean, th that's generally what people's reactions are. However, um, math and numbers are extremely important. They're certainly important for you in the community to understand the social fabric of the community, but more importantly, the city uses these numbers to help plan our services, to make sure that the services, the monies that we collect from taxpayers are used the right way, to make sure that the services we're providing are to those communities that they're constantly changing all the time, making sure that, that, that we're providing the right services. So what I want to talk to you about today is about data. Um, I'm going to speak to uh, a little bit about what the current situation is. Um, I'm going to give you a, an idea of what the demographic landscape is across the City of Toronto. Yeah, there are numbers, but uh, I think it's important to set the context because we've heard right, right from uh, the previous speaker that it's important to understand how the community has changed. We've seen the change from the, the British community, uh, as Gary mentioned, to, to Italian and now into Portuguese. I'm going to speak a little bit about everything that's happening around the city, a little bit about what's happening in the future, and I want to talk a little bit about the stats for this particular area. So moving on to the first slide, uh, we're going to go through a few things at the City of Toronto level. Um, just, I got my pointer here. For you uh, geography students out here, can, you know, there's a, there it is. There's where we are, there's where St. Clair West is, but we live in this larger region of the Toronto Census Metropolitan Area, Greater Toronto Area. Why is it important to understand the larger geography? Because there are so many things happening around um, St. Clair, around uh, the areas in the NF5 area that would impact this community. Okay? Um, job opportunities, people would live here, work elsewhere, people work elsewhere, come to this community uh, to, for leisure, along St. Clair, for jobs, for daycare, everything's interconnected. Next slide. Just give you a sense of some numbers here. So right now, the last census, we're looking at an overall population for the City of Toronto of about 2.6 million. The city has adjusted that number. We're at about 2.7 million for undercount and sampling errors in the census. Um, and the, uh, this particular community is about 132,000, so about 5%, but it's got very unique uh, characteristics that I'll go over in just a moment. At the larger regional level, we're looking at about 6 million in the greater Toronto area. Next slide. So you look at how Toronto situates itself to other North American cities. We're actually the fourth largest city now. We're probably the first largest city in the sense of ethnic diversity. We're number one there. And we've got various ways of measuring that. And this community is a reflection of that. In fact, I'll get into it in a moment, but the dynamics and demographic profile of this community is, ex is very similar in mirroring the overall Toronto statistics, statistics around ethnic diversity, um, income, uh, and uh, even population age circumstance, which I'll show you in a moment. So we're about number four, uh, around 2.7, 2.8 million round up. We're, right, we're, we're actually behind only New York City, Mexico City, Los Angeles. We're even ahead of Chicago now. Next slide. This is the landscape for uh, Canada. We're now at a population of 33 million. Toronto itself makes up about 17% uh, of Canada's population. But the important thing to note, and we talked, Gary talked about the ethnicity in this community, Toronto is the number one landing point for new immigrants in this country. So we got about 60% of all new immigrants uh, coming to uh, the large cities of Vancouver, Toronto, Montreal, and of that, about two-thirds come to Toronto. A lot of them settling in communities like this. Next slide. So this is a population pyramid. How many people remember this in geography school? By the way, just a test. Does anybody know why they call this a population pyramid when it never looks like a pyramid? Anybody? Just out of curiosity. Nobody? You ever ask yourself, like, why do they call this a population pyramid? The reason being is that a population pyramid, a pyramid is larger at the base, smaller at the top. Traditional demographers would see that as a basic starting point for demographic um, society, meaning that very few seniors, lots of children, um, and what's happening now in Toronto is we see, everyone's heard of people all being out of shape. Well, this population pyramid's out of shape, a little bit, a little bit wide at the, at the waist here. But this picture essentially represents a typical situation that we see across all neighborhoods in Toronto. And that's basically the baby boomers. Everyone's heard of baby boomers? This is a picture of the overall city of Toronto with a, with a wider gap. This is basically the age groups. 
and these are the proportions for male and female. You see a lot of people between the ages of 25 and 55, which are essentially the boomers. It's important to note through this presentation that baby boomers drive everything. They drive the social makeup of this community. They drive the businesses out in this community. Not only do we hear from Gary about the changing dynamics of the businesses from British to Jewish to the present Portuguese and Italians, but even the types of stores that you see on streets are governed by the changing landscape of ethnicity, and in particular, the impacts of the baby boomers. The baby boomers were typically those born between 1947 and 1966. And what's happened now is over the next 10 to 15 years, they're going to start aging even more so into retirement, putting huge infrastructure challenges on transit, health care, housing, so on and so forth. So it is very important, while I said before, data is dry, we need to understand data if we want to make sure that we're providing the right services in the community and the supports from a government perspective. Next slide. Population growth in Toronto, we're at about 2011, of course, right now, 2.6 million. It's estimated to go to about 3.2 million by 2031. And that's the date when basically all of the baby boomers will basically um, age out in retirement. Okay? So that's, it's, it's quite a steep growth. It's small and, and fairly flat you know, prior to the 1981 years, and it goes steeply up in terms of population. And we see that trend growing in these communities. St. Clair West, other communities where you have a major transit line coming up here, putting huge pressures on the entire city in terms of infrastructure, whether, whether they be sewer, uh, transportation, health care, right? There's going to be huge challenges in making sure that we accommodate for this population growth. Next, next slide. I'm um, just going to skip this one for a moment. Just basically, I'm going to leave this slide with you so that you can take away because there's a lot of numbers here. So I'm just going to go over some of the things that I think might be relevant to you. But this is just a showing that Toronto, in terms of uh, the Canadian landscape, where we are in terms of population change, a lot of growth is happening out west. Calgary, Edmonton, Saskatoon, job market growth, oil, that type of thing. Um, and we're at about a 9% increase. Uh, between 2006 and 2011, 9% increase in our population. Next slide. Uh, next one. All right, this one just quickly shows uh, it's the complex graph from you at the back. Toronto, various colors. Um, these are the four regions, the lighter colors around the, around the city of Toronto. All this really shows is that over time, a lot of population growth and jobs are moving up to the 905. The, the employment rates in the 905 are typically higher than 416. Um, the uh, newcomers tend to go where, where housing is, um, is cheaper. And so we're seeing a lot of growth happening in the 905 uh, areas, and, and tremendous amounts of employment growth are going out there. However, the basic thing to note with this slide is that the city of Toronto and its neighborhoods like this one have a disproportionate um, social needs. So there's typically higher numbers of people of low income, typically higher, need, uh, higher uh, new immigrants with lower incomes, greater numbers of people on social assistance. So while the city may have a, a slightly declining proportion of these numbers, it's got a disproportionate amount of social need. And we as planners must recognize that so that we make sure that we're not missing in our obligation and duty to provide services to those in need. Next slide. Uh, keep going. Uh, population change. Um, I'll bring up a, a website called Walving Toronto in a moment that will show us a little bit more clearly. But what this map shows is the city of Toronto, basically St. Clair is over here. Any of the warmer colors are where there are significant amounts of population growth. And you're seeing that in the downtown core, um, up north in North York Centre, um, small pockets down in Etobicoke South. These are largely driven by high density condominiums. Okay. Next slide. Now, this one's, this one's kind of interesting because what this shows is a graph, population by age groups, okay, from 0 to 4 all the way to 90 plus, and the change in population percentage-wise between 2006 and 2011. What we're seeing overall is that there's an increase in about 7% growth in those in 65 and over in the city of Toronto. And by the way, this graph is very similar to what's happening in this community. It's, it's almost I identical. The only uh, differences is that... Uh, you're getting slightly higher growth uh, of seniors out here. Uh, and in terms of children, it's uh, 
Here you're getting a higher, higher uh, increase in children that you're seeing in this one. This one, you're seeing a lot of decline in the 5 to 9 and 15 to 19 year old population overall city. And that's why you begin to see all of these issues around school closures, right? There's a decline, decline in children's population. However, with the baby boomers retiring soon, um, you're going to have that echo effect, right? The boomers are going to have kids of their own. And you're going to have a bit of a bump following that. So sooner or later, with the influx of new immigrants and those externalities, you're actually going to see a rebound in the number of children coming into these communities. And that's basically what we're beginning to predict and project citywide, of course. But you're going to see a little bit of a rebound with, uh, with uh, a bit of a, an echo effect from the baby boomers. What you're seeing here is like the, the working age population still increasing. A lot of this to, uh, due to new immigrants, right? And of course, seniors is just growing by leaps and bounds. The average age of seniors is constantly going up, right? Next slide. Keep going. <clears throat> uh, we'll just flip through these. Uh, I'll leave them here <laughs> since I want to show you some other stuff about your community. Next slide. Next slide. Keep going. One more. Keep going. All right, language. So Gary talked a lot about ethnicity. Now here's an interesting slide. This is the, a slide that shows the, the language diversity in the city of Toronto by mother tongue and by home language. Okay, so mother tongue is in blue, and what you're seeing is that you've got people who speak English, about 51% in Toronto speak English as a mother tongue, and 45% speak a non-official language. Multiple languages is about 3%. The language that people speak at home is quite a lot more that speak non-official languages in the home. Uh, and I believe for this community, uh, it's even more diverse. So this, this wedge here for St. Clair West is bigger. So there's a lot more people speaking a different language in the home. Everybody understand the differences between mother tongue and home language? So myself, my mother tongue is Chinese. It's the first language that I spoke and still understand but English is my home language now, right? Because that's the language that I speak for my wife and kids. But we use these at the city to understand diversity with mother tongue and to use home language and looking at these statistics to begin to understand the dynamics of the social culture in an area that might require language um, supports. So we use these in different ways. And basically the city is growing. This, this wedge is constantly getting bigger. There's a lot more people speaking uh, a different language. But that's generational. As a second generation comes in and their kids will speak more English, you might actually see the echo effect of that ball shrinking. Now, that's just my perspective. And you're going to see a lot of um, interracial marriages and mixing of different cultures. And I think as, re as researchers need to begin to understand those dynamics as they grow over time. Next slide. Uh, top languages. Next slide. If we look at uh, home language, the top languages in Toronto are the Chinese dialects, Cantonese, other dialects in Chinese and Mandarin, followed by Tamil and Spanish. The top languages in this community, what do you think the top language in this community is? Any guess? Throw up some hands. Spanish, yes, uh, number three, I think. Anything else? Italian, sorry, counselor? Yes. Italian and Portuguese. Those are the top ones, right? So there are slight differences. Uh, next slide. Well, by the way, just a note on um, languages. If you're ever looking at um, languages, keep in mind that the, a language is a very complex thing to analyze. It's not just the language, but it's the dialects behind those languages. So for example, the Chinese community has many different dialects. My dialect is Cantonese and Toi Shan, but I can't speak Mandarin. So when we have delegates from the city, the protocol office sometimes asks me to help translate um, a delegation from China. I can't because I'm Mandarin. And why is this important to note? Because the characteristics of those populations are greatly different. The social characteristics of the Mandarin population are very different than um, the, the, the Cantonese dialects, right? Same with Italian. North, south, different dynamics. So when you see these stats, remember that it's, it's, they're not uh, homogeneous type statistics that need to be thought with the differences of those communities and the uniqueness of those communities. Next slide. 
immigration. Basically, this is a trend of immigration to Toronto. Um, the blue line, just focus on the blue line, which is Toronto. Um, you can see it's basically being going up. What this graph doesn't show, and I did it intentionally, is as of 2001, immigration levels have dropped somewhat. They're beginning to rebound, and that was because of the 9-11, right? Changes in national immigration policies, the 9-11, reflected a, a drop, actually, um, at this level. Now they're beginning to rebound. Next slide. Keep going. Uh, this, all, this, all this really shows is that the change in immigrants, as Gary talked about before, changing uh, uh, is also reflected in terms of where immigrants come from. So traditionally, prior to the 1960s, a lot of immigrants came from Europe. Now they're coming from Asia, South Asia. And that seems to be reflected quite a lot through all of Toronto's neighborhoods, this one included. Next slide. Uh, religious affiliation, you can look at that later when I leave it with you. Um, all this shows is an income graph of Canada, Ontario, the region around us, and some of our, mis we're at the highest at 19%. One in five of Toronto residents are deemed in low income circumstance, okay? Uh, here in this community, if my memory serves, it's slightly lower, but not by much, maybe 15%, 13%. But when you cut those uh, low income statistics by population subgroups, they can be quite high, right? By new immigrants, by certain seniors groups, those, it, then your, their, your numbers will change. So I always see these as just overall indicators, and they could be vastly different when you look at the subpopulations. Next slide. Okay, I'm gonna stop there and flip over to a PDF, if I could for a moment, and I'll finish up in about five minutes. I think that's my time, yeah? Now, I'm gonna leave this with you as well. Our unit creates a lot of data. And we just launched this uh, ability about um, three months ago, but we can now calculate these statistics on the fly by any community or any area. Um, so my contact will be on this, uh, but we invite the community to contact us and we'll be happy to generate this, this custom template uh, for any community in Toronto. So the first one I did was for you folks, um, and I'll leave it with you. But this is the St. Clair statistics, roughly from Young Street over to Keele, um, CPRCN lines to the south and the northern boundary. Um, and what it basically, I'm not going to go through it all, but I figured I'd leave you, I just want to point out a couple of things. Uh, you've got a rough 53 to 47 female male split, which is about the same uh, citywide. Um, 0 to 14, 14% of children, 12% uh, of youth, 46% of the population here is working age, 25 to 54. 12%, 55 to 64 pre-retirement, and you've got about 16% seniors. Now the difference uh, between the overall city ones as I showed you earlier is these are a little bit higher over here and you've got a few more kids. So you can use these, um, and I'll leave these for you as a resource. Next slide. Or actually, we're gonna switch to the web, if I could. Now, what you see here is an application on the city website called Wellbeing Toronto. Um, what it is, is it's an online mapping system. Uh, if you go to www.toronto.ca, you can pull up these stats and look at them for any neighborhood, including the ones in St. Clair West. And I'm not gonna give you a, a you know, full-blown demo, but if you, if you click down here, Michelle, on Manage Indicators, just go down here and hit that. Yep. You're gonna get about uh, 10 categories of information. So if you pick demographics, you can actually choose your age groups, and if you, if you pick on one, it, it doesn't matter which one, um, pot, zero to four, stay right there, whatever, yeah, that's fine. Um, and what you'll see is that you go over to display, see if we can get it a little bit darker, this button here, yep, and just slide that over to the right, the off, slide it over to the right, yeah, and then just, what you can see then is how this neighborhood compares to other Toronto neighborhoods in terms of population zero to four. If you go over to the display button here, yep. We've also provided the community with the various services in this community, from healthcare centers, community centers, uh, churches and faith groups. What we're trying to do is we're trying to consolidate city information, whether they about, be about the demographics or the services in those communities in one place. Um, and we're providing this tool to the public uh, to city staff as well. So I just invite you to play around with it. So just an ending, I just want to say, uh, uh, I think it's very important to begin to understand how demography changes the way we live and breathe. 
And if we look at the biggest single social indicator that has affected all of our lives, it's the baby boomers, right? All of the social media, all the different types of um, goods and services, all of the employment trends somehow are tied to the baby boomers. And we as researchers are trying to understand as that age group ages, what's going to happen to the landscape here in this community? What's going to happen to the types of businesses, the population, the types of healthcare services that are going to be needed? Not only for the older generation, but the younger generation, right? So we're constantly keeping in touch with those changes in demography. And I think at this point, I'll leave it at that, and I'll hand it over to Dalton to talk a little bit about the experiences in the community. I'll answer some questions later. Thanks.